let's get to work. Ready to go? Oh my God, here we are. Oh, we're filming. Hey, oh, we're oh filming God, right now. It's Hello, <laughs> work. <laughs> Hello. Oh, we are here so at Backstage fun. Barry right now, downstairs, from, uh, at the Lori Beachman Theater. And I just got done seeing uh, the Hell's Kitchen Ets. And they are here right with us right now. Hi, girls. Can you introduce yourselves? I'm Mabel Syrup. I'm Bed Griddler. And I'm Pam Cakes. Can you kids give us a little harmony for our audience out there? We're the one, two, three, Hell's Kitchen Ets. If you guys think that's good, come to see the show because it's even better. <laughs> girls, how are you doing this evening? Lovely, just lovely. Lovely, just lovely. How long did it take you girls to get ready for this show? I know it's sometimes hard trying to clean up the diner afterwards with yeah. a bunch of people in here, but, you know, what was the concept? Well, there were certainly a lot of handsome bus boys who helped. Hello, boys! <laughs> good Jesus! <laughs> well, I tell you what, getting ready for the show, it, it, it does take a lot for us. Most of the time, it's just making sure that Pam here is uh, not getting herself stuck in a pantry somewhere. <laughs> but, uh, but we make do. Pam, what's the most interesting place you've gotten stuck? Well, I don't really feel proud about it, but I was stuck in the refrigerator earlier. Oh, Did you know the light goes off when the door closes? I've heard that. I didn't know. Oh, my goodness. She doesn't know much, eh? Yeah, she doesn't know much, eh? Girls, how long did it take you to get this all together for us? Uh, the show itself, oh, about four years. <laughs> a bit, a bit, quite a long gestation period. Yes. <laughs> but the shelf life is a lot longer than that, let me tell you. Now, where is it that we are, we'll, we, we'll be visiting this time? I heard that you had a diner before. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah, yes we did. We, we used to be at my parents' diner upstate. It was called Ida's Diner. It was America's first diner theater. You're welcome. Well, what happened to it? It, um... Shh, just, we won't get into all that today. Pam? Yes. It burned down in a fire. Okay. Okay. Oh, Pam. Jeez Louise. Well, now you guys are where now? Uh, now we are here at the Loose Caboose Diner in Midtown Manhattan. Oh, great. Do you guys have, like, a specialty dish here? Oh, the Caboose Salad. That's right. That's right. <laughs> It says so right on one, the menu. Our number one seller. Look, I can show you. We have props. <laughs> There's all these like skinny young boys that come to the diner, and that's all they I'm order. You, they're, they're crawling this neighborhood. There are boys everywhere. I can't keep them out. Wearing nothing. Nothing at all. All right, girls. Thank you so much for your show this evening. It was absolutely entertaining. Now, we're going to take a little serious moment. Uh, Miss Mabel Syrup, you are played by... Who? Jackie Cox. Hi, Strawberry. Hi, darling. I've never talked to you before. It's like we're strangers. Yeah, right, girl. Right, girl. <laughs> girl and we... wait, 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 what's the name of our show? What's it called? A Fields of Cox? A <laughs> Fields of Cox production. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's our production company. <laughs> yeah. Company. And then what was the actual movie? Chiffon knows it. She won't say it off camera, but like she gave us a movie title and everything. Now, we are also here with... Uh... Hi, I'm Mikey Lamasa. The author of the show. Yes. Ooh, how long did it take you to write this up? Uh, I think the first draft took me about maybe like like a month or two. And then we sort of did some rewrites and it was on the shelf for a while because all three of us have uh, jobs that, that do sort of take over our lives. And so we kind of put the whole project, project on the shelf for a minute. And then when we decided to dust it off for this project, um, it probably took me about three weeks to put it through some rewrites and to add some things into it. Um, yeah, so all in all, it was probably about uh, a good six to eight months of writing for it. Wow, amazing. And our little girl in blue over here playing the Born Yesterday Blonde. <laughs> I'm James Mills. <laughs> That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Adios, though. <laughs> I can't with you, girl. I just can't. This is the first time I think I've ever seen you out of, like, your, your Carol uh, sort of per personality. You always knew it was in her. It was in her. That's usually what they say to me. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite part of this show? Uh, probably watching uh, Pam Cakes uh, dance to I Got Rhythm. I can't. <laughs> oh, God. I can't. It's so good. Without Guys, any rhythm at this all. Is th this is theater. Like, now I know that we come here and a lot of the drag shows that we see are, they're cabarets, they're theater, but this is 
theater. I've been I, that's I've been telling people that it's it's, it's a, a play. musical. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's, it's, it's a musical. It so really like, is. Yeah we're, yeah, we're drag performers, but like it's it's an actual scripted show that has a full story arc and there's a plot and there's conflict and, and three part harmony. That's, that's very true. true. Okay, so I'm going to talk about that real quick. Yeah. The harmonies, the singing. On point, amazing, and I know that it's actually it's it's actually hard. You people don't know if you're not singers. The less people there are, the harder it is because you have to be yeah. on top of it. Um, we actually had uh, the help of our incredible musical director, Mr. David Caldwell, so amazing, who's wonderful. Thank and you, David, David was the musical director at Forbidden Broadway for many many years. Oh my god, yeah, he's great. What a great and and he and I have worked together on the Dottie Maraschino show. Uh, he also wrote Which, a musical. If you haven't seen, please follow Michael Lamassa and follow Dottie Maraschino and go see Dottie's next show. <laughs> She's got a six-piece band. I'm, I'm going to drag a strawberry and we're going to do a whole Fields of Cox interview. Oh, yes, we will. We will do a Fields of Cox interview no, but, all over this But land. David is incredible and David um, mapped out all of the um, all the harmonies for us mm-hmm. and he is wonderful. And it, what's, what's amazing about David is he, he sent them to us each in these individual little files and they're all in his voice and, and he has a unique voice if it's a word. But it, you, you never <laughs> Never forget it. Once you've heard it, and you, you never forget it. He sings each one of our parts by by themselves, just him solo moment. Doesn't <laughs> matter if it's in his range or not. Nope, just doesn't matter. He <laughs> still he still goes for it. It's so no good. digital like anything. He nope, no, nope. just this is it. Him and a piano, it. just just screaming and sometimes singing. Now, honest to God, like I was when I was sitting here, I was thinking to myself, I was this show really could go anywhere. You could take this anywhere. And one of the things that makes it super special is that it's drag queens. Because it's like, if this were young ladies doing this, it it would just seem sort of passe. And this is absolutely delightful and creative. And, of of course, up my alley. Well, and and that's the thing. I think as drag performers, which this is all in some way drag or not, I think we all took um, what was very uh, like this show could be played by three women no problem it could be. but i think Absolutely. we gave it a little bit of a, a, a touch of a drag sensibility i think to appeal to where our senses of humor were some of the jokes are very specific to our community to this neighborhood of hell's kitchen i think we took kind of what was just ours and infused it into a story that could be played by the andrew sisters the bupini sisters any of these famous trios that we're kind of emulating and we kind of took it and you should add that little extra drag something and hopefully that gives people a reason to come mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so, girl, I know that you, like, you're kind of the comedy relief-ish, because you're all funny, but um, you are, oh my god, girl, your your timing is remarkable and absolutely entertaining. What is your favorite part about Miss Pam Cakes? I think my favorite part, I keep starting to talk like her. Um, <clears throat> well, she's just a little girl from Little Rock, what can I say? Um... I think my favorite thing about her is she is completely sincere. She is. She doesn't realize that they're teasing her. She's sincere. She's straightforward. And, and, and you know, I got my start in acting. I, have a, I went to school for theater. And one of the hardest things to do, well, one of the two hardest things to do is play dumb. And, and people don't know that. And not be able to dance or sing on rhythm. Yeah. And that's two things I have to do in this show. You not give her any... When, when we were choreographing Straighten Up and Fly Right, we do this number, Straighten Up and Fly Right, and we're all doing everything, and Pam can't tell her left from her right, and we're going back and forth. And it's so challenging to choreograph him doing the wrong thing. The it's, it was really... Purpose. Yeah, and I was like, okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're going to hold one, two. Then you're going to go three, four, hold... It was like... That's a running joke that works so much, and even even though that's like a spoiler in a sense, um, it doesn't matter because if you come to see the show, there's so much more of it that is I can't even describe. <laughs> you know, the thing is though is that I want to get into family entertainment, so I think it's interesting that this is the kind of show you could actually like bring your family you could to, totally bring yeah, and kids of, and kids be, of all ages and be entertained. Nothing, blue in it, Nothing at blue. all, except for you, girl. You're all blue, but it's it is really entertaining. It's the pacing is excellent. Your song choices are actually people don't really understand that that is a that's an art form. Like to be able to peel out what you're going to be doing in your show, have the continuity. So that's... Find the musical tracks. Yeah. That's well, very true. And have them arranged. Was, arranged. <laughs> that was the challenging part is that uh, 
the show, the original uh, song list was even more obscure than this. Yeah. Um, but we had to go through and find, because we don't have a band on stage, so we had to find songs we could find tracks to. So there were a few tunes. There was, a, and, and the original draft, Mabel sings a song called Please Leave My Butter Alone. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, 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 once we've, one day, once we've sold out this run, we'll have the money to, she to fund a she full production. Yeah, yeah, we were, because I, I, I have a, a, a really weird knowledge of old tunes from the 30s if you and 40s. want if you want some advice of a playlist you ask this one Ta-da. he will he will pull it together for you so uh, it is very rare to see a, a group of girls obviously get along the chemistry is insane this show yes. is very unique and i'm so happy you brought this to us because we need things like this and uh, i need th- things like this too you know <laughs> when are you holding your next auditions because <laughs> I think I'd be uh, perfect for this kind of thing. We still have yellow available. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And red looks very good in yellow. <laughs> That's right. That's true. It does. People don't know that. But I don't have jaundiced skin. She can play the ghost of Ida Gridler. Oh, oh that's oh. good. <laughs> Young Ida, come Ooh, back from the dead. Oh, oh, that Ida. is marvelous. I'll take it any day. That'll be our Halloween show. The ghost of Ida Gridler. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, come, I'll come out in the box. Uh, be a Pamela Pamel costume. So, okay, each one of you, tell us a little bit about the show when it is, how long it's running, and go. So, we're running the next three Wednesdays at... Seven o'clock here at the Lori Beachman. Where? Theater. <laughs> <laughs> and it's downstairs at the West Bank Cafe right here on 42nd Street. And right here in Hell's Kitchen. In Hell's Kitchen. How ironic, please. Girls, thank you so much for your time and your talent. It's so amazing. How can we get tickets to this amazing show? Uh, you can visit um, our producing sponsor, SpinCycleNYC.com. That's SpinCycleNYC.com. And if you don't um, have the ability to write that down, I will post a comment linking you directly to the tickets. Ooh, Ooh excellent. So thank you guys for turning in, tur- tuning in, turning in to Backstage Barry. Because that's good night. Yeah, good night. <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Backstage Barry. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Where can we find this show online again? One more time. SpinCycleNYC.com. And can you guys give us a spin cycle in harmony right now? Um, spin can cycle, we? Here we spin, spin, spin cycle. You guys yeah, great. Just do it like we did the, the one, two, three. Ready? Yes. Spin cycle. Spin, spin cycle. Spin cycle. Hey, thank you, kids. Don't forget, oh, come to see this show, and it's running until? Um, May 9th. May 9th. May 9th. Three shows left. Three shows left, which is a good run. Girls, thank you again. We'll see you soon. Good night. Adios. Bye. Bye.